Hi everyone, my name is Allison Cawthon. I'm a music education student here at the Frost School of Music at the University of Miami and today I'll be discussing kind of an intro to flute and how you're supposed to set up the flute and some basic uh, notes on the flute. So what you're going to want to start with is uh, the names of the parts of the flute. So this one is the head joint. It's the one with the singular hole, and you could probably guess that this is going to be where you breathe. So, you're going to want to take the head joint and uh, put one of your hands, your left hand, on the circular part closer to the hole, the closed part, and then your right hand on the open part on the other side. And then you're going to want to set your embouchure. Now your embouchure is going to be your lip shape that you use to breathe whenever you are playing the flute. Every embouchure is going to be different depending on your lip shape because everyone's lips are shaped differently. So this is going to be the hardest part of playing the flute. Most people think when you're playing the flute that you're just going to be able to blow and it's going to make noise. That's what I thought at least. But no, it's very difficult to make noise on the flute. That's honestly the hardest part. After that, it's kind of smooth sailing. So, to start making your omniture, you're going to want to put your lips around the circle on the head joint. And then you're going to want to roll out your flute just a little bit so that your bottom lip is still touching the flute. That was something I was confused about. I thought that you separated your mouth from the flute and just blew like this. <sighs> That's not how you play flute apparently. So, and then after you put your mouth around it and roll out a little bit, you're going to want to make sort of an ooh shape with your lips. That's what really helped me to set my omniture. And then you're going to want to blow through an ooh sort of mouth. I relax the ooh a little bit so it's not quite so ooh, but more of an ooh noise. And, um, that's been really helpful to me. Of course, everyone has different lip shapes, so different things are going to help different people. If you're not getting it with the ooh shape, you could try more of an ah uh shape or an ah uh shape and see if you can get it with those. So what that's going to look like is, once again, left hand on the closed portion of the head joint, right hand on the open portion of the head joint. Kiss it, roll out, ooh. That's what it's supposed to sound like whenever you get it. Now, it might take you a little bit to get it if you got it off the bat. That's a great job. Now, just continue until you get it. Once you do, I'd recommend trying to um, hit the octave up. So what you're going to do to hit the octave up is you're going to blow a little bit harder. And then you're also going to blow downward. Now, don't worry if you didn't get it on the first try. I didn't get it on the first try. It probably took me about two hours to make noise on the flute, so no worries. But once you do make noise on the head joint, you're going to want to keep it closed by covering the both ends, and you're going to want to blow harder and blow more downward to get the octave up. So that's what this is going to look like and sound like. <laughs> It's not very pretty, but it's a really good exercise for um, controlling your breath and really getting to know if your omniture is working for you. Because if it is, it's going to get easier and easier to make that noise and it's going to get easier to hit the higher notes on the flute. So, once you get the head joint closed and just get this noise, then you're one gonna, one two, going to open it. So. You're going to take this open portion, don't cover it anymore, keep this hand wherever is comfortable really, and you're just going to want to blow into the flute the same way you've been doing, put your lips around it, roll out, and make your ooh-ah shape, whatever's working for you. And personally, this is a little bit of a different sound than uh, what we had earlier. It's also going to be a little bit different of an omniture for me. The head joint is easy most of the time and then the open door is harder and you also have to roll out a little bit more than earlier and you're going to have to blow a little bit harder to get the sound out. As you can tell that one's a higher noise. And if you didn't get on the first try, no worries. Keep trying. If you're getting frustrated and can't do it, go back to the closed head joint and reset your omniture because that's really where it's all going to start from.
So after, after that, on the open, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to shoot the octave up if you've got it down. If not, no worries. Some people who have been playing for months still can't shoot the op octave up. It's no problem. But it's a good, still a good breath exercise if you want to try. So once again, you're going to set your omniture by putting your lips around it, rolling out, and blowing. And to get the piccolo register that we're going to get when you're going to blow harder and blow downward. So it's going to be like this. Once again, slightly ear piercing, but it's still a good exercise for your lungs and for your flute to know if your omniture is correct, to know how your breathing works. It's a good exercise for um, really perfecting your breathing methods. So next we're going to learn about the other parts of the flute. So head joint, as we just covered. Next point is the uh, middle joint. It's the longest one. And as you can tell by its name, it's going to go in the middle. And it's got the most buttons on it. Next one is the foot joint. It's the smallest joint, and it's going to go at the end. It's got uh, about five buttons on it. So take your head joint to put it together. Take your head joint. Take the middle joint. You're going to want to take the side that is bigger on the middle joint and put it to the open side on the flute. And to get it on, you're going to want to push and swivel a little bit. If you're having trouble putting them together, make sure you have the right side on the middle joint. Mine says Armstrong on it. It's normally where the flutes put their brand names. And um, if it's still not going on, try cleaning it. If, it. if you're having that much trouble putting it on normally, it's just a problem with the cleanliness of it, which is okay. So. Next, you're going to take your foot joint, and you're going to take the side with the P-looking key on it. It looks like a P. And put it on the end of your middle joint. And same thing, push and swivel a little bit. Might be a little bit difficult, but it's okay. Don't try to break your flute, though. Just clean it. Try again. Um, so to set the buttons up together, you're going to want to take the P button on the foot joint and... Put it in the middle of the rod on the middle joint. So it's going to look like this P button, rod on the middle joint. And so the rod on your foot joint and the rod on the middle joint are also going to match up in the middle. Then on your head joint and your middle joint, you're going to want to put the hole in line with the buttons, the top row of buttons on the middle joint. Congratulations, you've successfully put together your first flute. So your left hand is going to go under the flute, while your right hand is going to go over the flute. So that's important to know before you start playing, because a lot of people try to reverse it the other way. A good thing to know, too, is your flute should be facing out to the right. I think this video is not mirroring it. I think it's the opposite direction. So make sure that when you blow into the flute, your flute is to the right of you. So you're going to start with your left hand and you're going to stick it under the flute and then your right hand's going to go over. So next you're going to try the hand placement. Hand placements on the flute are kind of kooky. So Take your left hand and take your thumb and put your thumb on the golf club button on the back of the middle joint. It looks like a golf club. Put your thumb on it. So, and then take your pointer finger and put it on the second key directly across from the golf club looking button. Take your middle finger, skip a button that's next to your pointer finger, put it on the next button. Take your ring finger, put it on the next button, and your pinky finger should naturally just end up on the button that looks like a rowing oar. So, that was kind of confusing, so let's go over that again. Thumb on the golf club button on the bottom of the middle joint. Pointer finger on the second button on the top of the middle joint. It's right across from the uh, button that looks like a golf club. Take your middle finger, skip a, skip the button next to your pointer finger, put it on that one, Take put your ring finger on the one next to that, and put your pinky finger on the one that looks like an oar that's right next to that.
Good. Okay. So take your right hand and put your pointer, put your pinky finger on the P button on the foot joint, and then your ring finger on the one to the left of that, and then your middle finger on the one to the left of that, and then your ring finger on the left of that. So that the, your right hand's just going to be in a straight line with your pinky on the P joint on the on the foot joint, on the P key on the foot joint. So. Uh, next, we're going to talk about some breathing exercises because breathing on the flute is actually very difficult. I thought, oh, the flute's a dainty instrument. It's so small. I'm not going to have any problems. I'm a vocalist. It's going to be fine. It's not fine. It's really difficult to get sound out on the flute and to get sound out well without exhausting yourself. It's very natural to get very lightheaded while playing the flute. I know I am lightheaded when I play the flute. If that happens, I encourage you to take a break, put your instrument down, don't play it for a while because um, it's just going to get worse if you continue to play it. And it's totally natural to be lightheaded for the first uh, couple weeks, even couple months that you play the flute. So. Uh, a good breathing exercise to start with and uh, to start learning how to breathe correctly for the flute and how to um, get your diaphragm working is to breathe in for four counts and then hiss out for eight. It's also a vocal warm-up if any of you guys are vocalists. So you're going to breathe in for four like... Then you're going to hold it and then you're going to hiss out for eight. Blow out all of your air on the eighth one. So let's all try that to get your breathing started. Okay, that's a good way to start with the breathing exercises. So as you probably weren't counting, but I had to readjust my fingers. So if you had to, if you put your flute down while you were trying that breathing exercise, make sure to reset your flute. Also, it's a good idea to try to carry around your flute as much as possible. It's a very weird instrument to hold, so it takes some getting used to. And uh, in order to play an instrument, you really have to know the instrument. So I'd recommend carrying it around your house if possible, around your dorm floor, around your apartment, wherever you are. Just carry it around with you. You get more used to it. Um, so I'm going to teach you how to play some chords now. Yay! It's probably what you've been waiting for this entire time because learning these breathing exercises and where to hold it is not as fun as actually making music, which is why you bought the flute, I'm sure. So we're going to start with B-flat. In order to play B-flat, you're going to hold down your pointer finger on your left hand and push down your thumb on your left hand. Then you're going to push down your pointer finger on your right hand, push down your pinky finger on your right hand. Don't push down the other notes. So it's one, it's your pointer finger and your thumb on your left hand and your first finger and your pinky finger on your right hand. So go over here, set your omnishirt and play and uh, breathing into the flute is different than the head joints. So you might even have to reset your omnishirt a little bit before you try this. but. This is what your B-flat should sound like. If you're having trouble getting sound out, try rolling it in and out a little bit. Try making more of an ooh space or an aw space. Try some different vowels. If you still can't get any sound out, move back to the head joint and then move it back to the open head joint and then move back to the flute. So that's your B-flat. Next we're going to do C. C you're going to push down your first finger on your left hand and your pinky finger on your right hand. That, that's it. It's just two of those. That should sound like this. D is the trickiest one for me personally. It's going to be uh, middle finger and ring finger on your left hand and then your thumb on your left hand. And then it's going to be first finger, second finger, third finger on your right hand. So no pointer finger on your left hand and no pinky on your uh, right hand. That should sound like this. Ah! 
and then you're going to learn E flat. E flat is uh, really easy when you're coming from D. It's going to just same fingering except put down your uh, pinky finger on your right hand also. So it's going to be same as D, which is uh, middle finger, ring finger, thumb on your left hand, and first, second, third, and fourth fingers on your right hand. It should sound like this. So, in conjunction, in conjunction, they should sound like this. And then a fun thing to do once you get down D and E flat is to trill. And you do that by uh, taking off and on your pinky finger on your right hand. It's kind of a fun exercise. Um, next you should, uh, maybe you want to play a song using those four chords you just learned because once again, you got a flute to play music. So here's a fun song you can do if you're uh, just learning these four instruments. And I'm getting this song out of the Book One Flute Standard of Excellence Comprehensive Band Method by Bruce Pearson book in it. This is exercise number nine. That's a fun little song you can do with just those four chords. So next we're going to talk about some articulation. Uh, for articulation on the flute, instead of just blowing, you're going to need to articulate some of the notes sometimes. You know, if you've got quarter notes and they're the same note, you're going to need to re-articulate every time. So in order to do that, a lot of teachers teach with poo. So instead of just doing and blowing on your oo, you're going to actually blow with poo. However, I'm not, uh, if you're welcome to start it. If you're going to play on B flat, it's going to sound like this. As you can hear though, the sound almost stops at the beginning. That's because the letter P is stop plosive, meaning that it's going to stop the sound entirely. So that's not exactly my favorite sound to start on. However, it is probably the easiest sound, so it's a good way to start on articulation. However, I would recommend starting on the uh, word do instead. So that's going to sound like this. So the difference between poo and do is the following. Poo. Do. So, as you can see, do is a lot cleaner, and do is better articulation-wise. So, from now on, instead of just, uh, head joints fine, but if you're actually trying to play notes, especially anything faster than a whole note, you're going to want to try to articulate it by saying do. So, once you become good at setting up your omnisher, and you're able to get out notes pretty much every time you play the flute, uh, you might be able to go on to playing some more notes than the four I showed you, which would lead you to ultimately playing a scale. So I will present a scale to you. This will be B-flat scale, major scale. So as you go higher in the scale, you're going to need to blow a little bit harder to continue to get out the notes. That is completely normal, and I would recommend continuing your breathing exercises to uh, get better at that because that scale right now even just made me a little bit lightheaded. So as you're beginning, it's going to continue to be a process to make sure that you can breathe uh, correctly and without a lot of problem. Breathing would also help for you to make sure you have correct posture. I recommend making sure your shoulders are back and your sternum is up. 
And so that gives your diaphragm, which is that muscle down here, which supports your breathing, it gives it a uh, good opportunity to be able to make sure the air moves correctly through you. So if you're playing flute really slumped over, you're going to have less breath support and you're already going to be struggling a lot for air, especially beginning. So uh, it's good to play with correct posture, which even I do not do sometimes. So it's just an important thing to try to remember when you're beginning. So uh, next thing we're going to talk about is the upkeep and care for your instrument. So... I'm going to go ahead and take my instrument apart. So to get it off, you're going to like swivel a little bit and pull. It shouldn't be too difficult to take it off. And with your flute, you're going to want to buy something like this. It is a woodwind cloth that I got off of Amazon. Um, they come in just cloths. They also sometimes come with like pencils and things like that attached to them. So you can stick them in and clean them easier. A little bit uh, they're about a dollar on Amazon you're going to need one though because lots of saliva and condensation gets in your instrument especially when you start articulating because there's gonna be a little spit in there and even when you're breathing and blowing into things you might not realize it but um, you can get a lot of condensation in your instrument which causes it to rust a little bit also it probably won't smell very good it can also lead to you not being able to put your instrument together with as much ease as you would have if it was clean you're going to need to clean all of the parts of your flute preferably especially your head joint that's really the one you need to focus on um, it's not gonna hurt you to clean the other parts of your instrument either though so you're gonna want to stick the cloth the as far in as you can get it and swivel it around a little bit to get the moisture off of your flute. Uh, preferably you're going to want to clean your instrument every time after you play it to remove any of the condensation in there. However, more realistically, I clean it once a week, even once a month, but once a week would be best if at all possible. It doesn't take that long to clean your instrument and uh, you really want to make sure it has a good upkeep because that's your instrument and that's going to be what you're in charge of. Alright everyone, I think that's about it. So I hope that this video helped any of you beginning flutists learn how to hold your instrument and uh, start with your instrument. Um, make sure not to give up just because you can't get a sound out in the first couple of days. It might take a while but I promise once you do get a sound out it'll be a really amazing moment and the music you can make with the flute is absolutely beautiful. So continue to foster your love and your passion for music and as long as you have that, life will never fail you.